by its regency for the Meeting. Um, roll call. Mr. Alabuni. Yes. Mr. Dickey. Yes. Mrs. Dutt. Yes. Mr. Jeffrey. Yes. And Mrs. Scott. All right. Please uh, stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Justice Thank you. I need a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I move Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve agenda as presented. I second. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Albuni? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. Mrs. Duff? Yes. yes. Mr. Jeffrey? Yes. I need a motion to approve the minutes from October 19th meeting. I'll move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve minute meetings as presented. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. Mr. Dutt? Yes. And Mr. Jaffrey? Yes. Is there any public comment tonight? I don't have any cards at this no time. Cards. I'm not online. You're not online? No, not are submitted online. None are submitted online. All right, Mr. Kraft, it's your show. Um, it's not my show. Uh, thankfully, it's uh, East Elementary. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Leanne Childers and, and let her introduce um, our, our all stars for tonight.
they're feeling a little bit nervous, so I told them that you all are real people too. So um, just bigger. Right. <laughs> so I brought some of my, my friends with me who have been participants in our student ambassador program at East Elementary School. And they are going to share some of the things that they do at East as student ambassadors. They've really taken on some leadership roles and have done a super nice job of, of doing a lot of things in our building to help different kids and teachers and things like that. So I'll have you introduce yourselves and then we'll get started, okay? I'm Donovan Hall. I am Emma Freshman. I am William Clark. I'm Bray Bray. So they're fourth and fifth graders, and I'm going to sit down here so I'm not in your way to share if you need to look up here. I also have the notes here if, if anyone wants to look at them from here, too. Okay. Okay. You ready to get us started, Donovan? Who is an ambassador? Ambassadors are leaders in our school. Ambassadors are students who like to help others. Ambassadors help our building feel more like a family. Oh. I, we have what do ambassadors do next? So who's that? Oh, it's you, Billy. Come on up here. Okay, go next. Here. Okay. What do ambassadors do? We greet students at each morning. We encourage students to make good choices. We help students by reading with them or doing flashcards with them. We welcome guests to our building. We make, pe we make people feel loved and welcome at East. Where do ambassadors work? You might find us in classrooms, near the buses, on the playground, or in the hallways. Just look for our badge and you found an ambassador. Nice. Why are you why are you an ambassador? I recommend being an ambassador because you, you meet new people, you get to help people, and the younger kids look up to you. I like to see the smiles on, on kids' faces and I like helping kids. <coughs> How does an ambassador act? How does, how does an ambassador act? Amba an ambassador needs to be kind, respectful, and be a good listener. Ambassadors always need to follow the barren way. So the kids were thinking you might want to know what the barren yes. way is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Give me just a second, friends. Okay, thanks for being I am respectful, I am respectful, I am safe, I am married. <laughs> So we say the parent barren way every day on morning announcements. Sometimes we have a little poem to go with it, but it goes along with our PBIS. Is there anything else you guys want to add? Do you have any questions for our students? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you guys get any special access with your ambassador badges? Do you get to go anywhere in the building that other kids don't? Only classroom. Only your classroom. <laughs> and, and, two, and two hour delays, other kids have to wait at the door, but we get a go in and do our delays. Hey, that's nice if it's cold outside. That's a nice perk, isn't it? Yeah. Donovan, what grade are. Um, the ambassadors, are they all fifth graders? Um, they're uh, mixed with fifth grade and fourth grade. Um, so, yeah. Okay. okay. Priya, do you know how many there are? How many ambassadors total? No. <laughs> There's a lot, though. A lot? Okay. We're in our second wave of ambassadors. And so we had about 20 to 25 in the first wave. We've got the same this wave. Some kids, these kids have been an ambassador all year, so they applied the second time around as well. Then we had new applicants the second time around too. How long do they, does an ambassador serve? 
It's okay. been about a quarter for each one. And so they meet with our school counselor. She wasn't able to be here tonight. They have lunch once a week with their school counselor. They talk about things that are happening around the building. They coordinate their services to make sure that the kids who might need an extra person to read with um, is covered. And then, you know, we have that 15 minute period before school starts in the morning. The kids come in at nine o'clock and the bell rings at 9.15. So instead of being in the classroom and, and doing whatever's going on in there, they go to a different, to wherever their assignment is and work with kids in classrooms. Emma, what's your favorite part of being an ambassador? My favorite part of being an ambassador is helping out with the students and the teachers with their kids. Very good. So. Billy, when I said hi to you, uh, a little bit earlier, you said this is the best year you've ever had. What's, yeah. what's making it so good? I don't know. I just feel more welcomed at Buckeye Valley. I feel a little bit better. Good. You have a good principal this year? Yeah. <laughs> good answer. That was a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, that could have gone sideways. <laughs> What, uh, one question, what have you learned being an ambassador? Have you learned anything that, new? That you're, not just help, you're not just helping your kids. You're helping, you're helping yourself because the, because the kids don't, don't only look up to you. They also um, think you're a great model. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> There's something about giving to others that helps you feel better too, right? Yeah. Very yeah. Thank you. 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 We'll talk about our report card a little bit, and I also want to share some things that we have going on in use this year in terms of some changes, some improvements, some things we're trying to do to maybe change some of the metrics on our report card in the coming years. Um, I also want to highlight with, um, with our student ambassadors, we have expanded extracurricular opportunities at East this year, and this is part, this is more intracurricular. But I was sharing with Mr. Kraft that we've had 170 students so far this year participate in extracurricular clubs. And so we had a donation for our PTO um, to help us with making sure that can happen. But we have had science club, STEM club, um, we've had culture club, which the teachers are doing that. I reminded them that's an 80s band, but they weren't, <laughs> they weren't aware of that. Um, we have Spanish club, math club, and, and all of those kinds of things. Oh, there are culture club <laughs> <laughs> And so that expansion of extracurriculars, I hope I can tie in at the end here to help you see why we're doing that. So an overview for our report card, looks like this um, and we'll go through some of the parts of this we are meeting what they consider to be the state expectations for achievement progress and then we're exceeding a gap closing on the report card and then our early literacy was only two stars so that the state designates that as needing support um, where I am personally with this is I want to see four and five stars across the board for a report card. And so that's really the vision of like, let's make adjustments and changes and, and see what we can do to get up into those four and five stars. Um, so with achievement, we look at the performance index when we talk about achievement. And so East on this year's report card has a performance index of 79.9 and that's out of 109. So on the left side, the performance index is calculated by the number of students who score in different categories on Ohio State tests for third through fifth grade. And so one of the things we want to shift is we want to move all of the percentages up in the scale, have more kids that are advanced plus, advanced, accomplished, and proficient, and reduce the number of kids that are falling below that prof proficiency range. I also shared over here, this is what we look like over a five-year 
um, five-year period. So you can see in 2018, 2019, yeast was up in the, in the mid to high 80s. We had a dip here in 2020, and we kind of know some of the things that occurred around that time. And so last year, it was back up to a 79.9. So there are some natural recoveries that are happening just based on the fact that um, schools are back to normal. Thank goodness. So in improving academic achievement, there are a lot of things that we talk about around the school. Uh, one of those is high expectations for all students. We talk about starting with the crown and then scaffolding instruction to get there. So we have high expectations for every student and then how we help them get there might change depending on what the student's needs are. And we also, with that, are really focused on learning about and implementing high yield instructional strategies. So that means really good instructional strategies that have research behind them, that show us that they have a lot of evidence that they work for kids, because we're gonna be able to accelerate learning for kids if we, if we use the right instructional strategies. Um, we're, we, our barren period, we're implementing interventions and enrichment. And while we had barren period last year, it was, it was structured a little bit differently. So we take a look at students' test scores and we get them in groups that are addressing the specific skills that they need and helping them grow from there. Uh, we also have expanded enrichment opportunities to a lot more kids. And so if a student is in the 50th percentile or above, they're getting an enrichment during the Barron period. And to help them with developing talent really is, is the goal there. Um, then some of the things that we're working on through the coaching cycle of, of teacher evaluation is making sure we have clear learning goals, that students know what the success criteria is. They know, okay, here's the goal for learning and here's what I need to do to be successful and show that I've learned it. And so if we have clarity in those things, that students can attain the expectations that we have for learning. Um, and then we're closely monitoring our student progress, and that goes through regular instruction and our intervention instruction. And then our um, professional learning teams, you may have heard of building leadership teams or BLTs. You may have heard of teacher-based teams or TDTs. It's a, it's a system structure that we use for teachers to be able to get together and talk about, here's how the kids are doing, here's what we see as real strengths for this particular learning goal, here's what we see as needs, and then what are we going to do as a team to plan instruction and to plan assessments to help kids grow and make sure that we have a high percentage of kids who are understanding our learning goals. And so that's a restructuring in the building too. So this fall has been a real period of growth and, and learning for our entire staff. Um, the progress component of the report card is really talking about our growth. It's connected to value added that, that comes from the state. And so the items you see in green there really mean that you're showing significant evidence that kids are making the expected growth. Um, and you'll notice that in fourth grade ELA, the red, that's, that is saying that there's significant ed evidence that our kids that in fourth grade last year did not make enough growth for, for their performance on the test and where they had been in third grade. So we're really examining that metric carefully and, and looking at some things that potentially happened and ways that we can make that shift and sort of disrupt that <coughs> so it doesn't become a pattern. So academic growth is, we have the achievement side and that's how well they score on the test, but growth is really where it's at for a lot of our kids too. So our varying period is focused on every student getting what they need to grow enrichment intervention and and we also utilize our reading specialists during that time so we expand that team instead of a team of three teachers it's a team of six teachers and so more kids can be seen during that time and our schedule revolves around making sure that we're using our resources wisely um, we have a goal of improving attendance rates last year's attendance rate was sitting about 92 percent 
would like to see that above 95%. We'd like to see above 95% for each one of our kids. So we have some plans and some things we're doing to help improve those attendance rates. It's actually one of the reasons we're providing those extracurriculars too, because we know that if kids want to come to school for extracurriculars, their attendance rates improve, their engagement with learning improves. And, and so that's a really nice way. We're also reaching out and making contact with a lot of families. If we have concerns about attendance, I'm either sending an email to the family, picking up the phone, and um, just saying, hey, how, how is your child doing? We've missed them at school. And that reaching out to our families makes a big difference. They're very appreciative of that. Um, we've been working on eliminating classroom distractions with our positive behavioral support. And um, we give away a million Baron bucks every week because the kids love to go to the store and purchase items with their Baron bucks. And those are all ways to incentivize the positive behavioral choices. Um, we have problem solving meetings when, when a student's not growing. We invite the parents in to meet with our team. And that includes our reading specialists, our school psychologists, our counselors, and we all sit around and talk about what are the things that this student is doing well, what are some things that we can do to support the student so that we can get them on the right path of growing. Um, we're going to be examining growth on MAP data. We get two metrics for MAP. We get, um, is the student growing? And we get a percentile for growth. Is the student achieving? We get a percentile for achievement. And that growth percentile is, is something that our staff is just learning about. And so we're, that's going to be a huge part of our discussions when we do the second step of MAP data. And if someone's not growing, we've got to figure out why. Um, because it, it, in my mind, not growing is urgent, very <coughs> urgent. Um, and then expanding the extracurricular opportunities for students. And Mr. Thomas, I'm going to put you on the spot because I didn't do a great job of talking about extracurriculars. Do you have anything you want to share about that? Uh, no, a lot of the, the kids are really excited and being able to have opportunities for them to um, be able to explore opportunities that they may not be used to in the classroom, find something that, that they really like, maybe a niche or um, something like culture club, maybe they didn't know about a culture and they want to get into it. Spanish, maybe they want to go into the Spanish field that we're not learning at the elementary school at this time, but hopefully that branches out and eventually they'll be willing to, you know, take off and find a hobby that they really enjoy. Um, our staff has done a really good job um, when they're meeting, they're going to meet once a month and they have a good content and they're provided, it's very structured and organized and the teachers are very invested in helping the kids. And when I sent out the email asking teachers who are, wants to be involved, I got so many emails back, and I know, well, we don't have that much money to be able to provide all this for everybody, but, um, you know, it's nice to see that our staff is very, you know, willing to you know, go the extra mile and help our kids. Thank you. Sorry to put on the spot there, Mr. Thomas. He's used to me doing that all the time, so. Okay, so then we have our, our K-2 literacy where we're at two stars, and I have really tried to do some thoughtful analysis, um, conversations with, with Michelle over at West, and had conversations with Paul and with Brian and other people who I could talk to. And I think that there are a few things that need to happen in order for us to improve this metric. Some of them we have control over right now, some of them are coming. And so um, one of those is we worked really hard through our Barry Curry process to have this system for further assessing kids to diagnose what the need is for reading. And then with the dyslexia law coming in in the coming year, that's going to be expanded even more as we have more knowledge about how to do that. But right now, our reading specialists have a system. First, we give this assessment. And if they do a certain way on this, then we choose a different assessment. And we sort of have this pathway to see if we can dig down and diagnose when a student's having difficulty. Um, we're using our reading improvement plans and targeted interventions is a state requirement, um, but we're really focused on progress monitoring and making sure that instruction is like right on par there. And then some of our work with district teams to consider curricular needs, we've had a phonics group that has been meeting. We have, um, we have a group looking at reading curriculum coming up that, that will be meeting. And those are the pieces that right now, I don't have control over that in the building, but I know it's coming down the pipe to help us with, with what the needs are in this particular area. I do have to say the K-2 literacy score is a really interesting one because it goes from fall to fall. 
And so this score that we got this year is from fall two years ago to fall last year. Next year's literacy score will be from last fall to this fall. So it'll be a few years before that score sees a difference because that so that, lag, lagging indicator. Yeah, it's a lagging indicator, not like the other ones. Um, and then professional development is going to come. All of our teachers are going to need 18 hours of training in dyslexia and understanding dyslexia, and then other professional development that's going to come along with that. I think all of those factors are going to be really beneficial in, in improving the K-2 literacy score. And that's all I have for you in terms of the report card. What questions do you have? When did the um, extracurriculars meet? After school. After school. Mm -hmm. And once a month. So they usually meet right after school, and most of them are finished around five. And we always feed them because they're always hungry after school. So there's always a snack involved. That's an extra incentive to come. And they're just doing really fun hands on things. I was impressed. I went into Spanish club and I started speaking to a student and they could answer me. And I was like, hey. <laughs> What's your funding resource for them? Um, we have a private donation that is coming from a foundation and it is donated to our PTO. And then our PTO is, is working with us to make sure that we're, we're using that money for extra curriculars. So an unnamed foundation? Yes. How much? $10,000 this year. Um, from a district perspective, we've got a couple pieces to try to support this. One where, uh, and Brian's doing all this work, so I'll honor that he's taking the credit for his hard work, is uh, we, we do have a group working. And the ESC is actually sponsoring kind of a professional development course. And the first session, uh, and I was able to sit down on the first couple, there were 18 people and 15 of them were Buckeye Valley. Um, members of our team. The teachers so, are hungry to know yeah, this information. And Brian is um, acquiring some additional phonics support materials that we're going to roll out as early as, as January to start getting in that in the hands of kids because we think, especially K-3, that phonics is, is such a key component and one that, that throughout education kind of lost some emphasis over time and, and we want to bring some of that emphasis back. And then Brian's leading efforts for an entire ELA curriculum analysis k8 he and i and we're also 912 i mean we met with the 912 team this afternoon with their department to to change a little bit of how we're structuring ela at the high school <coughs> but um particularly we will bring an entire curriculum recommendation to you early in the year um on for a new uh ela curriculum so um brian's leading a lot of efforts to to you know help support what's happening out in the on this and a lot of things I feel like Michelle and I collaborate a lot. We do a lot, a lot of the same things, similar things, use the same processes in our buildings. And, um, you know, the, the K2 literacy is we know the keys. We just have to get all the moving parts in the right place to make it happen. So. Thank you. Thank you. Remind me, where did you go to school? I went to Buckeye Valley, class of 92. Very nice. So you can stop by and see your yeah, picture. Don't pay attention to the hair back there. <laughs> and we took a picture and put me on the morning announcement. We're not supposed to get the year that you graduated. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam President, I don't have any other uh, updates under the district update other than to say that the communication committee is meeting uh, week after next. The caring culture committee is meeting in January, I believe, December, December, January, December. December. Yeah. Um, and resource stewardship. You're about to hear a whole lot about that from the uh, treasurer. So. Thank you. Boy. Heartstrings a little bit. Um, I need a motion to approve the financial report 4.1. <clears throat> Anybody? I move that the Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve the attached financial report with the recommendation of the treasurer. Second. 
I second. Thank you. Ali? This is just a monthly reconciliation um, for October. Everything was, um, everything balanced, everything was accounted for. And then um, I'll present the forecast to the next line item. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Albany? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Ms. Dutt? Yes. Mr. Jeffrey? Yes. I apologize, I forgot to ask if there were any questions. So post vote, if there are any questions. <clears throat> all right, 4.2, the five year forecast. I've been waiting all year for this. <clears throat> all right. I'll go ahead and move that the five year, that we approve the five year forecast as presented by the treasurer. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> a couple things. Um, it's really hard, hard to present after you know, great kids that come and present because the forecast is not as thrilling <laughs> as uh, Ambassador Club. So I will try to keep this as uh, eventful, exciting, however, however you see fit. So um, finance is fun. Finance is fun. <laughs> that's my that's my world. But. Um, so the five-year forecast is required from the ODE. Um, boards have to approve it twice a year, once in November and once in May. Um, and it is a reflection of the three prior years and the five years going forward. Two key items, well, more, more than two. Um, three key items, the five-year forecast divided into two sections, obviously revenue and expenditures. Um, district's revenue is made up of two main sources, local and state funding. Expenditures are, our expenditures are mainly salaries and benefits, purchase services and supplies and material. We are a service organization, so you will see that most of our um, expenses are on our people. Revenues versus expenditures. <clears throat> Looking back and going forward, you can see expenditures are increasing at a faster rate than revenue. Um, and we, use, we see deficit spending will begin in fiscal year 2026. We are in fiscal year 2023 right now. Um, the established general fund revenue source for fiscal year 2023, you'll see we have 80% of all of our funds come from local sources. Local sources are your property taxes, your income taxes, um, homestead and rollback. So again, our tax base is heavily on the ta local taxpayers. Um, we are very lucky in Delaware County, um, about 99.9% .9 of all taxpayers pay in full on time. So we, I got to say this every year. I thank you guys for doing your job because I'm able to do mine. Um, our second source, um, our biggest is source is obviously the state funding formula, which is a new budget every two years, depending on um, the governor and the um, legislation that's in place. Um, and you, you can see that changes. And that's also one of the biggest questions going forward in this funding um, five-year forecast is that they have a new plan in place, um, and again, it, it could stay, it could go away in two years. Um, it depends on who the governor is and how they want to prioritize public education. Um, notes about our operating revenue. <clears throat> Delaware County had a triennial budget that's every three years. They come in and recess every single home in the county. Um, we originally anticipated with an increase in class one. Class one is all your residential. Um, taxpayers um, of over 10%. Um, income tax for fiscal year 2022, so last year had an increase of 14.41%. Um, we were very skeptical to see how this was going to bounce back, bounce back post COVID um, because, again, people went back to work or were they working? Um, it, it, it's bounced back very well. Um, again, we expect a 21% increase this year over last year. A um, couple of um, reasons why. Number one is that the minimum wage went up. So therefore, if minimum wage went up, people are working, making more money, still having to pay the 1%. So that's the biggest reason in Delaware County or in Buckeye Valley why um, that went up. So all the two people have, not everybody went back to work in an office. Some of them decided to work from home. So therefore the companies made their home home address, the income tax, I need to pay the 1% for that. Um, 
like I said before, House Bill 110 is your state um, revenue. This is the fair funding plan they are phasing in. Um, it's probably one of the better plans that I've seen over by 13 years um, as being a treasurer. Again, it's only as good as if you have people behind it and a, a governor supporting it. So again, um, it it's a solid plan for across the state. Individually for Buckeye Valley, it doesn't do much to give us new money, um, but as a whole for the state, it's a good plan. Um, part of that plan is it eliminates open enrollment revenues and um, implements paying, paying districts directly. So before is that if we had a kid, we would get the money in and then we would turn around and get the money out. Now that money directly follows that child to whatever school district it chooses to detect. As you can see, this is our local versus state revenue. Um, again, we, I think, highly, 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 highly thank our taxpayers um, because without them, that's our funding sources. We are at the 20 mil floor, which is great for Buckeye Valley. So any new values or uh, revenue that comes in the district does get that because we cannot go lower than the 20 mil floor when it comes to funding. Oh, sorry. So is there any questions with revenue? Behind this report, the board had a 18, 20 <laughs> page of my assumptions. Um, but I told Mr. Kraft is I have to beat him in the slides and I have to be less than him. So I try to condense as much as possible in beautiful graphs. So that's our revenue. I was just curious. Sure. I, mean, I know it's not a big dip, but like, what's the what's the rationale behind the dip starting in twenty seven? Um, I was just curious why that would get down in the revenues. Yeah, um, so pretty much it's a funding formula. Waiting oh. for that, and then also too is that eventually having a ten percent over and over again, it's going to have to slow down or I guess going. They're calling for a recession early in 2023. So it's just playing it conservatively and saying like, we're not gonna keep on getting the 10% increases or the 21% increases in income tax. Um, so it's just being financially prepared for that as much as possible um, because it's gonna have to slow down and or seize a little bit to, to stay in line with the economy. I'm sorry, Troy, you were saying it was gonna go down? Oh, yeah, I was looking at the, our general fund revenue. Like it looks which, like it's, which line are you looking at? The green. One point oh seven. Oh, that's the total. So that's that's just saying that at the end of at, at, at end of fiscal year twenty twenty seven, we are spending more than what we're taking in. We so therefore we're eating into our reserves. Right. Okay. Um. Point oh one. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Fund down that revenue. I feel like in the forecast, the five years will be approved in May. That was set to take place in 25 and now it's back Correct. a year. Correct. Correct. Okay. So expenditures, um, <clears throat> as you can see, wages and benefits take up 76% of our total expenditures. Like I said earlier, we're a service organization, so that's where our money is gonna is gonna go. Um, we are still less than the average about 81%. Um, so we're still we're still in line with that. Um, so our biggest um, obstacle that we have that is pretty much a couple of our unknowns right now are utilities, um, gas prices, diesel prices, that stuff that is, I mean, it's uncontrollable. We have trim lights on, we have to transport these kids 200 square miles every day. Um, so that's just one that we're trying to budget accordingly. I also take deep breaths and Mr. Kraft walks to my office and says, hey, I have a great idea. <laughs> and so I just have to, my heart palpates for a second and then we get, we get a line. So um, we do discuss a lot of things. And um, again, just trying to keep these lines, these expenses in line with what the programming we need at Buckeye Valley. Um, as you see, the costs continue to rise. We know this. Um, salaries and benefits are growing the fastest, which again, they should be because they're, we're investing in our own people. Um, so the GFOA, which is the Government um, Finance Officials Association, which is more of a, a nationwide organization, they always recommend that the um, board should have a 60-day cash cash balance. The board has a policy that says that we have a 60-day cash balance. As you can see, even with that being said, we have enough to go past 60 days. 
Um, I just I didn't to consider as a whole um, income tax is showing a positive turnaround after the pandemic, which is which is nice to see people are still working and or back to work. Um, real estate values are continuing to grow again with the cost of, of not even just the values of them, but the cost of building a home right now. They don't really see the cost of a home going down. Um, and also with the interest rates going up, they just don't. Um, the new state budget is House Bill 110. It's not providing substantial new money to the district. So here we're staying consistent. Other districts doing well with it. Um, again, like I said, statewide, it's a better plan than they've ever had. Um, it just doesn't do major, major changes up and down for Buckeye Valley. Um, future funding is uncertain still uh, for fiscal year 24 to 27. Again, depending on the governor and the prioritizing of public education. Um, and then we need to continue monitoring um, as expenses, as I think I've said for the past 10 years, I'll probably say for the, the day I retire, um, we've got to monitor the expenses in order to make sure that we are living within our means, but still providing a very positive, um, fulfilling program for the students at Buckeye Valley. That's how we have checks and balances. Because <laughs> he's got great ideas and my heart starts palpitating. So it works out well. <laughs> so. So then once the board approves it, it will be submitted to ODE, um, and then anyone can see it. I think in our, in the general fund, we're paying down the special loans that we made for we are. the high school. Correct, we're paying, oh, we're paying down to the middle school HVAC, um, and we're paying down for the main campus upgrades that we just okay. completed. And then we only have, this is not in the general fund, but we only have one bond outstanding. Elementary schools are the only is the only debt that the taxpayers are paying on right now. Okay, is elementary schools. Everything else is paid off. Any questions? My biggest takeaway from this is that we should not have to go to our voters for operating funds in the next five years at a minimum. And if we're, if we're like careful, old. yeah, and, I, and could be longer. What you have to watch is when you see the graph where you start to see it go down, uh, we just have to make sure that you don't get too far into one of those because because the way it grows, that becomes a cliff very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure that, that we stay in that that zone of, of not getting toward a cliff. But you're right. I don't see any way in five years we need to go for operating funds, and it's entirely possible that that, that could go even further. So we're doing, we're doing it for nine years so far. So yep. we're going to keep that streak going. That's one streak I will keep going. <laughs> Facilities may be another question. I mean, we do. We all still keep seeing the houses going up, and and uh, families at this table keep giving us kids. So you know, it's, uh, that that may be. You know, that that will be. You know, the, the fight. The biggest financial. You know. Um, challenge we have is, is how do we manage our facilities, but Correct. from an operating perspective, we're, we're very blessed. Mm -hmm. We did approve last year, not new instructional coaches, and so mm -hmm. that's all in there. And it's all in there. Yeah. Correct. Uh, we also approved the, um, uh, we also, also in the budget this year, or for next year, is uh, two additional resource officers. Mm -hmm. It's in um, there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also a couple, um, <clears throat> Mr. Kraft has a couple ideas for programming. And just so, for, yeah, as we go through this, we've got a couple of positions built in you know, as we go. Around our goals to improve Correct. academics. Correct. Yep. And, and to deal with enrollment growth. Yeah. So, so those, are all, those are all in the forecast already. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. We are financially secure, and there's no reason we can't be knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, roll call. Oh, sorry, one second. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Albany? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. Mrs. Dutt? Yes. Mr. Jeffrey? Yes. All right, new business. I need a motion to approve the consent items as presented. I move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education to approve consent consent items as presented 5.1 through 5.12. A second. 
Okay, uh, item 5.2 is supplementals, and you see a, a list of supplementals. Uh, those are mostly athletics with few academic support um, built in there as well. Uh, I shared with the board last week an analysis that I had done because I know this is just one of those things that comes up every time. And based off of last year's uh, supplementals, all of athletics came out to be just under 1% of our overall budget. And our co-curricular, extracurriculars, and academic support came out to be just under 0.7%. So the, you see a lot of these items. Um, I, I still think it's some of the best money that we spend in terms of growing young men and young women to be ready to go out into the world and be successful. So um, we watch it and we'll, we'll commit to continuing to watch that. But so item 5.2 is a series of um, mostly focused on winter uh, athletics but um, a ski club advisor that's fully funded by the, uh, the, what the kids pay to be a part of that group. Um, the other thing you'll see at the very end is an adjustment to a previously applied um, destination imagination advisor that was just built around um, lack of enrollment for that activity. So uh, that's an adjustment downward. 5.3 is a vision specialist for some of our kids. Uh, we have, uh, as part of their IEP, they need vision support and vision um, uh, exams and, and treatments. So uh, you either have to transport that kid to get that treatment or we can bring a specialist in. And it's much more cost effective and time effective to, to bring that specialist in. So this allows us to bring that professional in to our buildings to support those kids. It's not a great number of kids or a great number of hours, but it's important. Uh, 5.4 is a list of volunteers, and um, you can see that there are some athletics um, volunteers there, uh, but a good number of those are uh, some parents and staff members supporting our vision programs. It's uh, like moving a small city to uh, to bring that group uh, to a performance, and, and those of the individuals are going to help with that. 5.5 is one I'm pretty excited about, and that's administrative employment. It's always fun when career paths cross again. And uh, I knew this next individual as a young administrator. In fact, a much younger superintendent gave her her first administrative job. And uh, he's excited about uh, um, 10 years later being able to, uh, to bring her on to, to this team. So I'm going to let uh, Leanna Ford, uh, Buckeye Valley resident and parent, introduce herself and her husband. and. Let you get to know her a little bit. Hi, I'm Leanne Ford. This is my husband, Dwayne. Uh, as he said, we have two children here in Buckeye Valley. One is a seventh grader at the middle school, and one is a fourth grader at West. So uh, we have been residents of this community for probably almost 14 years now. Um, and now we're part of the family with the school, so we are very excited. So thank you. We're excited. Thank you for joining. What have, what have you been doing uh, this last year? Um, so uh, this last year, I've been in Olentangy uh, schools, and I've been a people services supervisor for uh, four of our 16 elementaries. I've also served um, school psychologists as well as um, our specialized units. I help support that staff. Yeah. So, so. Well, it's great to have you here. So Thank welcome. You. You'll notice that we have eight additional days, um, our eight uh, transition days built in. Part of that is because um, Karen is actually going on to retiree status as of January 1st. So she can't volunteer her time or have any paid time over the next 90 days. So any transition that they get to do has to occur between now and, and December 31st. So Leanna has, has committed to, to um, using her vacation time up for Olentangy to come and, and, and do those transition days. So that's a little bit more than you normally see, um, but just because of the nature of this transition. 5.6 um, are classified substitutes, and that's uh, James well, who, Wells, who will be added to our pool. Uh, 5.7 is a bus driver, Brenda Edwards, as a double. I'm sorry. Okay, the numbers are different. Yeah. I'm sorry. 5.6 is classified. <laughs> Uh, that happened last time, I'm not sure. Yeah, 5-6 was classified, I'm sorry. That's no, just classified employment. employment. Oh, okay. Attendant secretary. Oh, okay. Um, that is uh, Sarah Iden. Sarah Stacey. is a... Stacey. I'm Susan Eisen. Su excuse me. Stacey. Yeah. Stacy. I'm so sorry. Let me try to get to, to this, because my current document 
evidently misaligned. Um, thank you. Stacy Iden has been a pair pro for us at West, and as soon as uh, we get a replacement for her, she'll move over to the um, attendance sector, and we're hoping that happens as early as next week, so, or the week after Thanksgiving. Um, and then uh, classified substitutes is James Wells, as I mentioned. mentioned. Bus driver is Brenda Edwards. Brenda is actually a retired bus driver from another district who uh, missed being around the kids, so we're able to bring her back on. Uh, onto our team, and she lives in the district, so we're excited about bringing Brenda on. Uh, Corey Thompson works for us in, in several different roles, uh, and we're just adding a role to what she does, and that is to serve as a home instructor for um, uh, students who have that built into their instructional plan. 5.10, this is a little bit earlier, and we're excited about this. Uh, the district calendar, we shared this with the union about two months ago for them to take a look at it. The um, the boards had a chance to look at it. The admin teams had a chance to look at it. And uh, we're excited about getting this approved so the families can start doing their planning uh, for next year. 5.11 is a uh, generous donation. Uh, the Layman family has donated $650 towards the assistive hearing devices. And if you've seen those, uh, we have those available for the last uh, performance. And it allows uh, attendees with, with hearing issues to have a personal amplification uh, system that's connected to the sound system uh, for the auditorium. So uh, very appreciative of that. 5.12 is uh, another joint purchasing cooperative. This is the State of Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Program. And um, there's a $100 fee to join this, but allows us then to go up to their pre-bid uh, equipment list specifically uh, for some of the fitness playground equipment uh, that's going in behind the middle school as, as we prep uh, uh, that site. And those are the consent agenda items. Thanks for getting me back on track. Um, it's not related to any of these, but just um, at some point, can you share the, the design of the playground for behind the middle school next next time or in the next couple months? Yes. Sure, so. Or when whenever it's ready. Just... Yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit more of a fitness area than a yes. building tree. Yeah. Um, but still gives them that space to get out and interact. And, yeah. Yeah, okay. Any questions? I asked all mine already. Mm -hmm. okay, roll call. Michelle Booty? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. This is the yes. Mr. Jeffrey? Yes. <clears throat> all right. Are there any discussion items? There's nothing listed. Any public partic participation on non agenda items? Mm -hmm. We are going to convene into executive session. We have to say which reason. Yes. For F. F. To consider specialized details of security arrangements. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And we will not be having a vote after the executive session. We'll convene and and leave. So thank you, everybody. We're going to convene into an executive session. Do we need a motion? We do not. I don't think. No, we just. We don't need a motion to convene into executive session. I don't think. To move to go into it. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Pardon me. We do need, I do need a motion to move into executive session. I'll move that the Buckeye Valley Board of Education convene into executive session. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call. Michelle Booney? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Zett? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. See you.